what has happened uh, now why is he no longer comfortable when we're dealing with the matter of bill 10 we said let's streamline our system let's get rid of article 52 so that we do not have two entry points for purposes of petitioning uh, a president a, a president you can only petition after a president uh, has been has been elected you can't petition a nomination that's what we 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 we, we, we had proposed and we're discussing around that issue they cried on top of the mountain says no we should not deal with that leave it as it is that's just the way it is he gets in there he says oh it's okay we said let's uh, let's let's change the the public order act they refused and said no 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 let's not touch the public order act now and then, then the next thing, yes exactly uh, well the, the, the thing is why should it continue why should it progress perhaps that is why the previous government was kicked out because uh, that, uh, because we depended on that why does he want to suffer the same fate because if the people of Zambia are saying let's change this then it's the people of Zambia whom we act for and on behalf they should be the ones to decide the course that this matter should take now what is happening is that he's fighting every Everyone. he's fighting the church he's fighting the NGOs he's fighting the political parties he's causing confusion in the judiciary confusion in the in the National Assembly at the end of it all you see a person who's so hungry to perpetuate his stay in power he can't be talking about uh, staying in government for eight to nine years if he has not thought about it is something that he has considered he shouldn't be afraid he won by one million what's the fear now should we suspect that he rigged the 2016 election should we suspect that he no longer has control of what he had control control of and may not work out in 2021 and may not work out for him in the next election should we do that I think we should be saying what is the best thing that can be done for our country right now hi lovely viewers it's me again your one and only Mtatim Pundu welcome to my youtube channel if this is your first time on my channel kindly subscribe to my youtube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Our guest on the hot seat is Lusaka lawyer Makebi Zulu. Good morning, Council, and welcome to the hot seat. Good morning, Hope, and thanks for having me. Good to have Great. you here. How's, your, how's your Tuesday morning so far? It's a happy morning and uh, being happy by choice, not by circumstances that are happening around us. We have no control over what is happening to us, but we have control over how we respond and we choose to be happy. But in any event, things are not good, but we, we, will, we will overcome as a country. All right, yeah. good to have you on the show. You're welcome. Thank you. A lot that we need to look at this morning, but let's start with uh, what's trending right now. Um, we got the news yesterday, President Haka and Hichilema yesterday suspended three concord judges following recommendations by the Judicial Complaints Commission. Your comment on this development? You know, I, I, I would really want to firstly start by addressing the President. That if he has to hurt other people to feel powerful, then he's a very weak individual. He's a very weak individual in that these three judges that he targeted are people that in 2016 he described as criminals in wigs. These are people that he had a Vedanta, uh, 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 I was almost saying Vedanta because I listen to your show and you keep saying it's not Vedanta, it's Vandetta. So in this case we're using Vandetta against them. It is clear that he has had an issue against them. Now you will recall that in 2016 on the 5th of September there was a ruling of the court where they said, listen, 14 days is 14 days, this matter is concluded. Our judicial system is set up in such a way that in the in the practice or in the in the in the carrying out of their responsibility or in the exercise of the judicial authority the judiciary is independent that is in article 22 of our constitution so if a judge is going to make a decision that judge is not subject to any authority or person they're only subject to the constitution and the inbuilt system that we have as a country in correcting a judge is by way of appeals but for the constitutional court and the supreme court you can't appeal their decisions are final now having made a decision that uh, the matter could not go beyond 14 days a legal decision for that matter there were a couple of people that were disgruntled 
amongst them we had uh, Dante Sunders, we had uh, um, uh, Mr. Peter Sinkamba, we had Douglas Yakalima, we had about eight complaints that were filed in with the Judicial Complaints com uh, uh, Commission. The Judicial Complaints Commission issued eight decisions where they are saying there's no prima facie case against these judges. The complaints was against the five judges, that is uh, the three judges that have been um, suspended, including Judge Mnalula and Judge Bomba. Judge Bomba has since retired, Judge Mnalula is still around. I don't know why she's not one of those that has been suspended, but I can only speculate to the effect that when that decision was made as regards 14 days, she was the opposite opinion, an opinion which I think this, uh, this government really liked at that point, because she said, no, we can go beyond the 14 days to hear this matter. But the three judges said, no, we can't, because the Constitution says it has to be 14 days. Now, the, 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 what has happened uh, now is that the Judicial Complaints Commission, having dealt with those eight matters, saying that the, the, the matters were, the, the judges were, were cleared. They even wrote to the judges and said, you've been cleared of all these matters. In 2023, after HH1, uh, in fact 2022, late 2022, one Joseph Busenga complained and went to the Judicial uh, Complaints Commission. By that time, the chairman was uh, uh, Vincent Malambo, State Council. And uh, Vincent Malambo, State Council, responded to the complaint by Busenga to say, listen, this matter has been dealt with a number of times by the Judicial Complaints Commission. Having dealt with it, whether they decided rightly or wrongly, we are functus official or we can't sit and determine a matter that we already determined. Uh, and the only reason it was determined those eight times is because those eight times the matters came in at the same time. Busenga sat back, then renewed his application. Vincent Malambo wrote back and said, we already told you we can't reopen this matter because it is a dead issue. So it was thrown out. It was thrown out. So now you're looking at a matter that was dealt with eight times. Now this ninth time, one Moses Kalonde from Matero, a surrogate of the UPND, goes and complains with the new commission that has been set up, the appointees of the president, they decide, okay, all these times they were wrong. Uh, Vincent Malambo was wrong to, to, to deal with this matter and say it was already dealt with, and they have reopened the case. After the case was reopened, the judges went and they raised the preliminary issue and said, you have no jurisdiction to deal with this matter because it is a matter that was already dealt with. What did the Judicial Complaints Commission uh, under the leadership of Eva Jala, because Vincent uh, Malambo now has declared interest, say I can't deal with this because I already uh, responded to, to, to this letter. Not just that, uh, State Council Vincent Malambo in that particular matter in 2016, he represented Judge Chubomba, he represented Judge Munalula, and his submissions were to the effect that they were not wrong in the manner that they decided that 14 days was 14 days and they couldn't go beyond that. So he, he, uh, he, had, to, he had to recuse himself at this at this point in time. And the view that he held is a view that the commi uh, commission held, has held all this time, except this new commission appointed by Haka Inde Ichilema has come up with a new way of dealing with things. They have reopened the case that was closed. Now that is an affront and an attack on the judiciary because the executive cannot be seen to be wanting to correct judgment of the courts. They have no such jurisdiction. If at all we are going to proceed in this manner, it to mean that hope if you go to the subordinate court you have a matter there and you appeal to the high court for example if the high court decides that you are right and the judge or the magistrate in the magistrate court was wrong it means that we need to expel or suspend that magistrate for having made a wrong decision that is what this is coming up to should we be headed in that direction no we shouldn't 
because our legal system is created in such a way that there has to be consistency in the decisions that are being made. Decisions have to be consistent for purposes of inspiring hope, inspiring trust in our judicial system. But what has happened right now is that we are saying that whenever there's a change of government, there has to be a change in the judgments or thinking of people that are in the judiciary. An example is that case of the eligibility of President Edgar Chagualungu. Upon change of government, there have been judgments that have been uh, to the extent that he is eligible. Now the matter is coming up uh, before court and someone has raised, the UPND has taken the matter to court to say he is no longer eligible. And you will notice that these three judges that have been suspended are judges that are also sitting on that panel. They are judges that sat in the other four panels uh, that decided that he was eligible. Now, the, 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 the reason this is being done is not far from fetch. On the 26th of this, of this month, on the 26th, we are appearing before the Constitutional Court. We are appearing before the Constitutional Court where this matter is supposed to be argued as to whether Edgar Chagualungu is eligible. We are arguing in that matter that he is eligible because you already dealt with this matter. Now the composition is that there are 11 people that are sitting on the bench uh, uh, right about now. With the suspension of the three, that leaves us with nine. Of the nine, the majority were appointed by President Hakainde Hichilema. I'm not suggesting anything, but it is telling as to why the president could have moved so swiftly to deal with this matter. Yeah, no, that was going to be my next question yes. because um, you've obviously heard the talk after this news broke out yesterday. I mean, we know Thursday there's the case there, the eligibility case of yes. President Edgar Lungu. So you equally feel this is the reason why we've seen the suspension of these three judges do you equally feel i mean we had it's not know, rocket if you science had the conversation mm. we had with dr sishua mm. um a few minutes ago saying this could be a case of of revenge on the on on the three judges and do you also feel it's because of the ed galungo eligibility case coming up on thursday it, it's, does, it's, does this explain the suspension it's today? not rocket science that the reason this is being done is to stop the issue of the of, of the eligibility case. President Haka Inde Chilema is determined at all costs to ensure that President Edgar Chagualungu does not appear on the ballot. That is the scheme of things in this in this whole thing. We have seen the grossest interference with the judiciary during the term, uh, this term where Haka Inde Chilema is in office. He has interfered with the judiciary right from the court and I put the blame on the Chief Justice because he has played along with what the president has wanted to do. As a matter of fact, I'll take this opportunity to call on the Chief Justice to resign. To resign because he has failed to secure the independence of the judiciary. Is there some type of intimidation on the judges? It is. It is some type of, in fact, not some type, it is in fact intimidation on the judges. Look at the judges that have been taken out. Look at how easy they've made it to get rid of a judge. Uh, judge Joshua Banda is not there. Judge Muma is not there. Because they were seen to be persons that were that when when not or, or the state at least found them inimical to their interest we have a situation where this president appointed a judge who was not eligible to be to be appointed as a, a judge judge malumani when judge maluman was appointed he was nine years and 11 months at the bar he should have been appointed only when he was 10 years at the bar, but they went ahead and appointed him. We raised this issue, went to the Constitutional Court and said, this is wrong, this can't be done. But alas to our dismay, they went ahead and agreed. So we are having judgments that are suiting the executive and defying the very constitution that describes how things should be. That, that is what we're having and there's no better way of describing that interference because in one moment the president is sitting and he's saying we are going to establish the economic and financial crimes court the next thing the chief justice uh, gets up and says well i'm establishing the the economic and financial crimes uh, division and comes up with a sign number five of 2022 the next thing he says we'll be trying matters in five months the chief justice jumps and says yes we shall try out five uh, in five months but we have been asking the question, what is an economic and financial crimes 
uh, and, and economic and financial crime. There is no definition of what an economic and financial crime. And what is curious, the idea of doing things in a hurry. I will, I will show you something. Hope. If you look at the, the statutory instrument that uh, Judge, uh, Judge, Judge Mumba Malia, the Chief Justice, promulgated, it, it only has four sections. In these four sections, it says this, uh, this order may be cited as the economic and financial this is established uh, the economic and financial crimes court as a division of the court he creates a division of the court even when he had no power to create uh, uh, a, a division of the court he goes ahead and creates it puts it in the subordinate court then they come up with the rules in uh, statutory instrument number 10 of 2024 i'll show you something very curious on that statutory instrument in uh, in particular section two there's an interpretation clause and in determining what a financial an economic and financial crime is they define it as follows economic and financial crime has the meaning assigned to the words in the economic and financial crimes division of court order 2022 which is si number five of 2022 so this these rules are referring you to si number five of 2022 when you look at si number five of 2022 there is no definition of what an economic and financial crime is so the the, the 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 issue is that this idea of singing the song of the of, of the of the executive has caught up with the with the with the judiciary now the yeah, and, and i'm happy you've touched on that because yes. my next question was mm -hmm. going to be on the on the independence of the judiciary because unfortunately from what we are seeing right now it's the politics that's being smeared on the judiciary, unfortunately, and for most Zambians, that is not what they want to see. We want to see a situation where, you know, most Zambians have, you know, confidence in the judiciary. But when we begin to see that such moves, it does question a lot. So, you are a citizen lawyer, Mr. Zulu. How do we, uh, counsel rather, how do we get it right? How, how do, do we, we get, get it, right? it right? Because let's look at, you know, how they are appointed. Exactly. So yeah, we start from the point of view yeah. where they are appointed. We start from that point of view and say, how are we appointing our judges? Are we appointing them based on their allegiance, on their political allegiance? Right now, I will tell you that the judiciary is divided. There are very few good people, very few remnants. And if you went to the judiciary and asked the judges that have been there for a long time, they would rather leave because what it is now is not what they envision said it would be every judge is timid every judge is scared now because of the way that they have been treated by the executive the functional independence of the judiciary has been eroded all because the chief justice himself has been weak he's allowed his system to be used by the executive he's the truth is this is not the first time we're seeing this happening in this country the truth is that this is the first time it's happening in this country there's no other time where you have seen the judiciary and the execu executive system from the same hymn book. President Haka I'm actually referring to the appointments, yeah. Don't you feel they all appoint based on those lines and some type of loyalty is expected from them? You see, the, the, the problem has been that we have for a very long time depended, depended on, a, on the goodwill of people. We have depended on the goodwill of people and now we expected that we would depend on the goodwill of Mr. Haka and Chilema. We thought he was a decent person. Now we are having where the law is being abused. This is not Mingalato. Mingalato is uh, using the law in its proper context, but he has abused the law to achieve his own purposes. This is a typical example of Mr. Haka Inde Chilema, who described these judges he has suspended as criminals in wigs in 2016. Today he has come. The, uh, the, the chickens have come home to roost and he has suspended them. Settling scores that he had in 2016, thinking that he should have been president. Now the issue is why is he so insecure now? Why why is he determined to ensure that uh, President uh, uh, Edgar Chagualungu is not on the ballot in 2016? Didn't he win by one million? Does he think he has lost that one million? Should we question how he won in 2016 now that he seems like a timid little kid that is uh, afraid that his candy may be taken away? That should not be the case. We expect that he should lay his hands off the judiciary. We expect that Mumba Malira should stand up to the occasion and say, I can't do this anymore. Anymore. I'm happy you yes. said that because yes. should equally be in that position. So now, my 
my next question is how can the judiciary be strengthened the judiciary should be strengthened by having a, a chief justice who will say no to what uh, the executive wants who will protect his own judges and not throw his own judges under the bus we can't have that you can't have a, a chief justice who says yes i think we have failed to help the government uh, recover assets it is not the job of the judiciary to help the government recover assets their job is to uh, to, to pan out justice their, their job is to ensure that justice is done in every matter we had the president go to livingstone and addressing the judges and telling them i'm willing to increase your salaries but only recover what was stolen then uh, that is what I'm going to use to to, to, to improve your, your conditions. Now you are telling a judge to say, go and convict. Because your money is with these people that I think store your money. That is exactly what he's saying in that. In, in that. So we have had this, uh, this problem for quite some time now. But if the Chief Justice was to rise to this occasion, I expected that at that particular occasion, he should have told the President, Mr. President, that is not how we function. Ours is to protect the Constitution. Ours is to be independent functionally. Ours is to be independent in our judicial function. Ours is to be independent in our administrative function. Ours is to be independent. Even in the handling of our finances but all this has been taken away from the judiciary that independence has been taken away from the judiciary and we have a lame duck of the judiciary and the moment that hope is lost in the judiciary the moment that people no longer have confidence in the judiciary they will not go there anymore what is going to happen people will go to the street people will sort out things their own way the very fact that the, our, our court system has become inconsistent in dealing with issues is problematic the very fact that they are choosing to reopen a matter that have closed four times is in itself a problem and that should be something that we have to rise as a nation and deal with and say so we can't go on in this route we can't go and use system to settle uh, personal scores let the judges sit let them make a decision let the judiciary be independent let the chief justice take charge of his position as chief justice and do the right thing all the uh, the, the the arms of government are gone Nelly Muti is misbehaving at uh, at uh, national assembly the chief justice is misbehaving at, uh, at the judiciary and we have the president misbehaving in in state house we are now a banana republic we are now a, 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 a close to being a failed state and that should not be the case we need to protect the constitution hope all right i think we've, we've spent ample time on the suspension of judges let's see how how things play out on thursday maybe we can uh, we can have uh, you know another lengthy discussion on it after that otherwise let's touch on the on on the rule of law um how do you assess the government's adherence to the rule of law, particularly regarding human rights? I mean, we keep hearing this. Um, the current president, Naka Ndh Lema, has heavily touched on on this as well. We will be governed by the rule of law. Do you, is, is that what's happening? President Naka Ndh Lema is a hypocrite. He is a hypocrite. What he says is not what he does. The rule of law is only a song to him because he's pandering to Western influence. He, he wants to be seen to be good internationally, but he's a bad father at home. He's a bad father because everything that he says does not happen in the manner that he says. On more occasions than many, he has said people, when people are arrested, within 48 hours, within the requisite period by the law, take them to court. Don't arrest people without investigations. Is that what we've been seeing? We have people like Rizwan who were in police custody. At midnight, they are taken out of police custody, taken to Lilai, guns fired uh, over their head, and asking them questions that related to Edgar Chagualungu, to say, you know where he has hidden things. You tell us where he has hidden things. We've had people like Emmanuel Mwamba, brutally assaulted by the police. We've had uh, people that ha ha have been abducted in this in, in this whole process and the the person but still i mean it would be fair to point at the president on that when when he's giving this directive we, where, where should this sit we, we have the police ig 
who should execute that because we the problem is that the, this president decided that he is going to place the police under his office he's going to place anti-corruption commission under his office he's going to place uh, the drug enforcement commission under his office so he's the one in charge so he can't say you do this that's a directive uh, he's the one who's in charge and if they are not following what he's saying then he has a problem that's what i'm saying uh, the president is very weak because he just wants to use that power to hurt other people and if you are going to use your power to hurt people then you are the weakest individual that we know all right, in case you're just joining us, it's Tuesday's edition of the Hot Set, and our guest this morning is Osaka Loya Makedi Zulu. Uh, we'll be opening up the phone lines at 10 if you have any contributions or, you know, questions uh, this morning. So what legal recourse um, is available to citizens facing human rights violations or, or unfair treatment? See, the only hope that we have is the judiciary, which is being raped left, right, and center by the executive. And my fear is that people people will eventually, if they haven't already, lose trust in the judiciary. Look at the bogus constant judgments that have been uh, being entered into. People are being compensated when they don't deserve a compensation. Hope when you are being tried and the nolle prosequire has been entered, it means that there's a charge hovering over your head. Anytime the state can come, re-arrest you and prosecute you for, for that matter. But what we have seen is connivance between UPND and the Attorney General's chambers where people are being compensated. The blame, I will take it to the judges. If I am a judge and someone comes to me with an issue to say I was maliciously prosecuted, the ingredients of that uh, thought or that wrong is that I must show that I was prosecuted. I must show that it resulted into an acquittal. Now these people have not even shown an acquittal. A judge stands up and goes and signs a constant uh, judgment to say compensate them. That is what is incompetence. That is what is incompetence because you need to satisfy yourself that the ingredients of the tort of the wrong that has been complained of have been satisfied. Malitata got compensation. Does he have an acquittal? No, he doesn't. This uh, minister Kabuso got compensation. Does he have an acquittal? No, he doesn't have an acquittal. And I this is so earlier how mm -hmm. we get it right because I mean these politicians come and go in the name of democracy. We have to. We, no constant there. We have to get it right by ensuring that voices are heard. The problem is that a lot of people have gone quiet. They have left the governance of this country to the whims and caprices of uh, uh, Mr. Hakai Ndechilema. He has threatened everyone. He is, this is a rule of terror. Dictatorship does not go beyond this. This is a dictatorship. The, the, the root word for dictatorship is dictate. What he says is what goes. He says let there be a financial and economic crimes court the judiciary uh, the chief justice jumps and sets it up let's conclude matters in uh, five months the chief justice jumps and sets it up yes these people have been um, uh, wrongly uh, prose uh, uh, prosecuted they have knowledge over their heads the judges jump and sign the consent so judgment. Want, what, what we have a problem with the system so if, thank you and maybe the problem yes. the judges we should be pointing the, the fingers at and i am pointing my fingers at the judges mm. look at judge mumba malila himself i i i i, I I'm sorry I have to go for him because he himself knows the right thing to do but doesn't do it. He writes a paper. There's this paper that he writes with a justice. The Economic and Financial Crimes Courts in Zambia. Mumba Malila himself sets up this court and he discusses this matter academically. Now remember I showed you where they purport that there's a definition of what amounts to an economic and financial crime uh, and then they don't define it in the document that they're saying it has been defined. Then he goes in his paper let me read you what he says on page two he says where there is indeed no single comprehensive definition he says there's no single comprehensive definition meaning that there must be a loose one but to check the papers we don't even have a loose definition of what an economic and uh, a financial and economic crimes court is he says where there is indeed no single comprehensive definition of what constitutes economic and financial crimes it is easy from the designation to uh, use to describe these crimes to appreciate that these are in effect
criminal wrongs that have a damaging effect on the economy and the financial system of a country. An economic or financial crime can thus be understood as a crime committed with the aim of earning wealth, obtain a benefit or other advantage through illegal means by violating the law governing economic activity or regulating the fiscal regime. Now you would expect that that police officer by the roadblock who gets a 20 quarter from a motorist should be appearing before the economic and financial crimes court. That case of Suji Light in uh, Luapula province, those people should not be appearing before a normal magistrate. They should be appearing before the financial and economic crimes court. That person who forges a receipt should be appearing before the economic and financial crimes court. But what do we see? We see names appearing before the economic and financial crimes court. Provided you have a name that is uh, uh, can be related to President Edgar Chagwalungu, then you appear before the economic and financial crimes court. He doesn't define what it is, merely describes generally what it is in his paper, when he shouldn't even be doing that because he's the one who set up that. He's the chief justice and this magistrate and other judges will rely on his writing to come up to a conclusion where in his writing he's not even sure of what he's talking about himself. We have a problem, ladies and gentlemen, and we shouldn't be headed in this direction. Our systems have failed and we need to correct the systems. Mm. Another talk that pops up, uh, the powers of the president, the talk that you know, we need to somehow cut the powers of the president. Um, what do you make of that? We do not need to cut the powers of the president. The president is exercising powers that he does not have. He's delving into a realm that he shouldn't be delving in. He's interfering with the judiciary. He's interfering with uh, the, 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 the National Assembly when these are supposed to be functionally independent. Nelly Muti has just proven to be, to, to be a cadre. And I don't want to conclude the same about the Chief Justice, but all the signs are, po are pointing to that fact. And it should not be like that. We need to arise and correct issues. Let the good men that, uh, that we have in this country, if the law can protect us, let the good men arise and say, speak out as to what uh, the right thing should be for this country. Mm. Let's set up systems that will be strong enough and reliable and not to depend on the goodwill of people. Strong systems, let's focus on, on, on Zambian, you know, ordinary Zambian as the bigger picture. And let's take a look at constitutional reforms. What do you think are, are necessary to strengthen, you know, Zambia's democracy? See, now people have been referring to, to the president as uh, Dr. Lakuna because he sits back and he decides what is a lacuna, what is not. He refers to Article 52 and says, 52.6, there's a lacuna there. There is no lacuna. He's just not happy with the effect of that particular clause. That does not mean that there is a lacuna. If you don't like the effect of the clause, that, that does not mean there's a lacuna in there. Then when he talks about that, you see that the Electoral Commission is busy jumping up and down and saying, yes, let's go ahead and amend this. And that is what I'm saying. That is dictatorship. He has destroyed the Electoral Commission of Zambia. He wants everyone to to pander to, 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 to his wishes. Whatever he says is what should go. That is the problem that we have. So if we're going to talk about constitutional reforms, it should not be President Hakainde Chilema to, 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 to fight for constitutional reforms because he himself has been hypocritical about this whole thing. You see him in one, uh, one breath saying there's nothing wrong with Article 52.6. I, I would rather waste 30 days. I would rather deal with it in 30 days than have a person impersonate as a president. What has happened now? What has happened uh, now? Why is he no longer comfortable? When we're dealing with the matter of Bill 10, we said let's streamline our system. Let's get rid of Article 52 so that we do not have two entry points for purposes of petitioning uh, a, presid a, a president. You can only petition after a president uh, has been has been elected. You can't petition a nomination. That's what we 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 we, we had proposed and we're discussing around that issue. They cry on top of the mountain says no we should not deal with that leave it as it is that's just the way it is he gets in there he says oh it's okay we said let's uh, let's let's change the the public order act they refused and said no 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 let's not touch the public order act now and then, then the next thing, yes, all our leaders there exactly. Uh, well, the, the, the thing is, why should it continue? Why should it progress? Perhaps that is why 
the previous government was kicked out because uh, that, uh, because we depended on that why does he want to suffer the same fate because if the people of Zambia are saying let's change this then it's the people of Zambia whom we act for and on behalf they should be the ones to decide the course that this matter should take now what is happening is that he's fighting everyone he's fighting the church he's fighting the NGOs he's fighting the political parties he's causing confusion in the judiciary confusion in the in the National Assembly at the end of it all you see a person who is so hungry to perpetuate his stay in power he can't be talking about uh, staying in government for eight to nine years if he has not thought about it it's something that he has considered he shouldn't be afraid he won by one million what's the fear now should we suspect that he rigged the 2016 election should we suspect that he no longer has control of what he had control of and may not work out in 2021 and may not work out for him in the next election should we do that i think we should be saying what is the best thing that can be done for our country right now <laughs> hands off the judiciary how, how can the hands off be made more inclusive and, and just representative of, of uh, the diverse zambian voices what is wrong with the constitution to start with I mean, we keep hearing yes we have, a, we have a very bad document we've been we, hearing that for the for the longest time when we, right now we can when we're article. dealing with 2016 Haka Inde Ichilema said this constitution is okay. Let's not deal with it. What is wrong with it now? Which provisions of it have been tested? Yes, and my view, my view is, my view is, if President Haka Inde Ichilema has a problem with Article 52.6, he can't interpret the constitution. The constitution says if you have a problem with the interpretation of this uh, constitution, go to the constitutional court, go and get an interpretation. The same way Dan Pule went and got an interpretation of whether Edgar Lungu is eligible, and the constitutional court held that, interpreted and said he was eligible, is the same way that Haka Inde Chilema should sponsor his surrogates to go and say is uh, what is the effect of 52.6. He will find that what he told this country, the lie he told on the floor of the house to say this may make people perpetuate their stay up to eight or, or nine years, which, which fact is not true at all. They will disagree with him and give him the right position over that. He has no say over what the meaning of the provision of the constitution is until the constitutional court says so. We are seeing a person who's preparing himself to have this country as a full-blown dictatorship because he thinks he knows it all. He ch has chosen to usurp the powers of the constitutional court by interpreting the constitution himself. Who has advised him? Where is the attorney general? Where is his, uh, his, uh, his legal advisor? Why are they advising him wrongly? I don't think President Haka Inde Chilema had the time to sit down and study the constitution on his own. He's incapable of that. Someone must have uh, advised him. And uh, uh, Mr. President, President, whoever advised you, advised you wrongly. Wake up and do the right thing for Zambia. Do it for posterity, not for yourself, not for vengeance, not for hatred, not for anything that you may or may not have against President uh, uh, Edgar Chagualungo or any person that was there before you. It is time to do what is right for Zambians. Right now, Zambians are saying there's too much load shedding. Deal with it. The cost of minimum is too high. Deal with it. There's so much corruption in your government. Your minister, Kapala, dealt with an issue of procurement. He signed letters that are suggesting that he, uh, where he had no power to do so and suggesting that he abused his authority. Let uh, Anti-Corruption Commission do its job. Don't interfere with what Anti-Corruption Commission is doing. Let Anti-Corruption Commission tell us which ministers in his government are being investigated uh, for corruption. Then we know that you, your right in the, uh, 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 your heart is in the right place. We want to know that. That is what Zambians are interested in. And also we have a, we have a new justice minister. Nawal has clocked about three months in in office. What are your impressions on on some of her immediate achievements so far? That is Justice Minister Princess Kassel. What do you mean by immediate achievements? You show me one achievement that has been uh, has been made. The zero, none. That is uh, the issue. Is that. Haka Inde Ichlema is only interested in putting someone there who will not be able to speak because they don't know what they are there for. They have no requisite experience or, or knowledge well, to be in that she's particular. Not qualified for the job. No, she's not qualified for the job. She's not qualified for the job. Everybody knows she's not qualified of the job, uh, for the job, and it shouldn't be that. And perhaps it's for that reason that we are hearing make our treasure statements, such as there being a, a lacuna in the constitution when there's none whatsoever. What we are seeing now is animal farm. 
and Mr. Hakainde Chilema is leading this. Let him put his act right. Hands off the judiciary. Hands off the National Assembly. Let our democracy function. Our democracy has clogged. It needs to be oiled once again. It needs to be made to move. We need to take out that timidity from the judges. That interference uh, with, the, with the judges. We have aides of the president. We've had people in government approaching judges to rule in a certain way. Some of whom have had to recuse themselves from certain cases without stating why they are recusing themselves. But those are noble men and women that we still have in the, in the judiciary that are able to say, no, 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 no. You can't interfere with my function. I will make my decision based on the evidence that is before me, not to please an aide or anyone that is a surrogate of President Haka in the Ichilema. We need to move from that position and do the right thing. Hmm. Such on human rights issues in this country, which ones do you think are, are so pressing and, and how can they be addressed? Uh, listen, in order to perpetuate his stay in, in government, he has decided that Zambians should not hear alternative voices. Democracy is a marketplace of ideas. People need to listen to what the opposition has to offer and compare it to what the government is doing. But apparently this time around, if a member of the opposition speaks against the government, what are they saying? This is seditious practice. Seditious practice is making people to rise against the government. There's nothing wrong with people rising against the government if, pe if the government is not delivering on its promises. And rising against the government is people being able to make self-oriented decisions based on the performance of the government and says, we don't want you anymore. Uh, because of that, as by law established through these processes, we are going to get rid of you. People are appearing in court for merely expressing themselves, expressing give us, their give views. Us some examples where Just, you feel that, it, that is the case there. Where... Listen, we have the case of Munia Zulu, we have the case of Mabonga, we have the case of uh, a lot of other, pe other people. We had a priest preaching in church, and what's the next thing? He was being summoned by, 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 by the police to go and give a statement as to why he said what he said. We had Father Salah in Chawama saying listen these graphs that you are telling us people don't eat graphs people in the compound are thinking of what is it that we're going to eat today what is it that we're going to eat tomorrow address these issues what was the next thing that we heard we heard uh, President uh, Hakainde Chilema standing on a podium and saying we are provided free education you go there just because you don't like what a citizen has said does not mean that it's an offense seditious practices is not necessarily saying what the government does not like but they have redefined it to say if you say what we don't like we are coming for you Jack Mwimbu shamelessly uh, had a press briefing we were saying you bloggers you people in in, in these uh, in this uh, whatsapp groups you people on uh, facebook we are coming for you for the comments that you are passing you want everyone to praise you you don't want people to express their view over your performance the the many things that you said you would do you have not done and people have a reason the problem yeah, but, but some of the, the problem we have seen especially on some of the uh, the opposition figures there's a case attached to it if it's hate speech how do you deal with it okay. listen what, what amounts to hate speech we had people, uh, the UPND cadres, sat and they said, listen, you, JJ, we are coming to deal with you. They insulted President uh, Edgar Chagwalungu, saying we are going to circumcise you. You people in Lusaka are tolerating President uh, 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 ECL. Bring him here. We take him to Mukanda. We are going to circumcise him. You can't be dealing with him in, the, in such a light way. Then people were saying, listen, you people who are saying that southern provinces are no go area. Why are you saying that? Our people are coming to us and they are complaining over your acts and they are saying we need to do something about this. We are stopping them. We're saying we can't go that route. What you do, you go and arrest them and saying that is hate speech. It is hate, hate speech only when it concerns people that you are related to and it's not hate speech when you are saying things against them. Look at what Batuke Imenda said. He called uh, the, the Archbishop of Lusaka to say he is Lucifer. Isn't that hate speech? Doesn't that amount to hate speech. Uh, Sean Tembo went to court and said, I'm going to prosecute this man as uh, by law established if you people have failed to prosecute him. The DPP said, where is the evidence? The evidence is presented before the DPP to say, this is the evidence. What does he say? He says, no. 
you can't. Is it because uh, Batuke Menda is SG for UPND? Doesn't that qualify to be hate speech? Why are we applying the law segregatively? There has been a collapse in the rule of law. Examples abound. Examples abound as to how President Haka Inde Chilema and his government have abused the system to fit their own will and what they desire. But they will, ne they will not take it away from, from Zambians. Zambians are going to fight and they will fight within the confines of the law to ensure that he goes and he's replaced with credible people that will be able to put the reins of government in the right place, put systems in the right place and protect the rights of the Zambians. It is not about him. It is not about ACL. It is about the heart and soul of the nation. The heart and soul of the nation currently ought to be the judiciary and he has dealt with it in a wrong way. He has raped the judiciary in untold ways and we are collapsing at a faster rate than we can ever recover. We need to stand up and deal with these things within the confines of the law. Now, Council 2026, we go to the polls and there's a talk of um, electoral reforms. What electoral reforms do you feel are necessary to ensure free, fair and, and credible elections in Zambia? Electoral reforms were proposed in Bill 10. Those electoral reforms were refused. They said we do not want these electoral reforms. Because it was envisaged that, listen, let's have a system that is going to deal with a country proportionally. Let's have proportional representation where all parties that are going to participate in an election will have a marginal representation or a proportional representation based on the numbers that they have in the, in the election. We want wanted every vote to count. We said let's have a proportional representation where, or a mixed member representation where we'll have the youth properly represented, persons with disabilities properly represented. That is what we needed to, for purposes of national building. What happened? That was, uh, was denied. They said no, we will not go in this direction. We said let's enhance the rights of people. Let's have a referendum where people will have more rights. Let's in include economic and uh, cultural rights in the constitution. What did the UPND do? They campaigned against that. Now that they're in power, they're saying, let's amend. What is it that they want to achieve? I can tell you this. In 2026, there is no way on earth that President Haka Inde Chilema can amass 50 plus 1 votes. It is impossible. Of the things that they have done, there is nothing that compares with what the, the, the PF did in their term of office. In these over three years that they, uh, they, they have done and borrowed, there is nothing that can be pointed as to say this is the good use of the money that the UPND has made. The concentration of the UPND has been let's kill PF so that we can prolong our stay in power. Let's kill the opposition so that we can leave people without an option but for us to stay in power. But the politics that we chose for ourselves is that a government that delivers to the expectations of the people is the one that is is going to stay in power. You have to please the people of Zambia. You have to please the people of Zambia by answering their call. And their call is how can we lower the cost of living, lower our cost of living, create more employment. What do they do? They come in and say we've created 30,000 30, jobs. Where did you take those people, the 30,000 jobs? It is in the infrastructure that was built by PF. As a matter of fact, PF created jobs and they filled the vacancies that were created by reason of the infrastructure that PF had created. If you're going to build 20 hospitals, 30, 40 hospitals, you need personnel in there. They came at a time before PF could put personnel in there and only put personnel in there and say we have created employment. They never created employment. They took advantage of the progress and the development that was created by Isn't PF. Isn't that what we should expect from everybody? That is this what... One that is, yeah, exactly. This one will come on. Exactly. This one because that is what... It should continue. Like it that. should continue. Yeah. It should continue like that. It should continue like that. But what has been their stance? Their stance is that let's kill so that we continue whether or not we've brought any development. They want to perpetuate their stay in power by means of abuse of the law, by means of blackmail, by means of an orthodox means, such as the ones uh, against the judges uh, right about now. That's unorthodox. And
President Hakainde Chilema should stop uh, settling scores in this manner. We know that he doesn't like the three judges. We, in fact, he's the wrong person to have made any move against these judges because he already has a perception about them. He says these are criminals in wigs. In reference to the three, why hasn't Munalura been suspended? She was part of the judges that made that, uh, that decision. The decision is a decision of the court. Why is Judge Munalula still uh, in, the, in, 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 in the constitutional court? Why has he only uh, decided to get rid of the ones that disagreed with his position? That is very telling. All right, well, we had moved to, to electoral reforms, and, uh, and maybe let's touch on the ECZ as well, the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Um, how can it be strengthened to improve electoral processes? It can be strengthened only if we depoliticize it. President Haka in the Ichilema only identified people like Zalomis who are affiliated to him, who are affiliated to the UPND, Chipenzi, who is affiliated to the UPND, and put them in charge of that, uh, of that organization. Do you think they can exercise any form of independence? They can't exercise any form of independence. Previously, we had um, former chief justices being appointed to go and head that because we knew that this is a preserve. This is a, a preserve of integrity. The, the, the judges themselves, the chief justices uh, themselves, as a as a preserve of integrity. These are people of proven integrity that we are taking there. And uh, the systems were running and they were running properly. They were able to run an election where they were able to hand over and say, okay, this is what has happened and uh, presidents have come and they've handed over. Look at the, the, the rape of our democracy in the Kabushi by election, in the Kwacha by election. Look at uh, the decisions that the Electoral Commission has been, has been making where they're going to say, we'll decide who from a political party is going to sign an adoption certificate. What business do they have in dealing with who has signed what document uh, in a, in a, in a in a political party. The Constitutional Court recently held that the, even the, the, the legislature, parliament, has no business over who signs a letter in a political party appointing a leader of the opposition. All they have to do is just receive that. It doesn't matter who has signed it, provided it's from that particular political party. And uh, if, 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 the, if the Constitutional Court is able to have that holding, who is the Electoral Commission of Zambia to now come and say, no, 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 no. We will decide who from your party should sign sign uh, 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 an adoption certificate. Which law gives them that power? There is no so, law so, so that we gives going? them that so, power. So where, where are we we going? are going to hell. If we, are, if we are questioning the independence Hope of the we are going to are hell. As a matter of fact, we are in hell. Let's get out of this hell. Those people with the very high levels of incompetence at Electoral Commission of Zambia should not be there. We need to call them out. The problem is that we have been afraid but as Zambians. But again point back to, the, to how it goes, it, it. Yes, it goes back to the issue of the president putting his fingers in every cookie jar and ha wanting to control everything. Our systems are going to fail us. And the, the only way to check the excesses of the president is through the judiciary. But he has raped the judiciary. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do as a country? What are we going to do? Everything is in a mess. Everything is in a total mess. I thank God for people like the, the Deputy Chief Justice, who, when the Chief Justice gave a wrong response to, uh, to a question asked as to the failure of the judiciary to help the government recover uh, the, uh, the purported stolen assets, said our role is not to help the government to recover assets. Our role is to met out justice based on the evidence that, 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 that that is brought before us. That is the response that should be coming for that, from that institution and not people who are going to stand up as the Chief Justice did to say you go and help the government recover. It's not the job of the judiciary to help. Your job is to do what Article 122 of the Constitution says. The job is to make out your functions as stated in the Constitution and not to play to the whims and caprices of Mr. Haka in the Hichilema. His role ends at appointing. The functional independence that you should have is guaranteed to you by the Constitution. Instead, judiciary has it's not even helped itself. It had even made it easier for them to be removed. Look at how the look at
at how they removed the former DPP from that office. A flimsy process, a subjective process. Now everyone is being subjected to that subjective process where it depends on the goodwill of whoever is sitting. It's not a matter of evidence. It's about who has complained, who has an interest in this complaint. Let's decide in the, in the best interest of the person who has an interest in this complaint. If it's Haka and H. Lema, it goes. Just like that. Within a day, you purport to hear a matter. Even when you've been told you can't, you don't have the jurisdiction, within that same day, you communicate to the president. The president, the same day, at, at 18 hours, he issued a statement and says, I've suspended these judges. At the wrong time altogether. But the timing is telling. Our democracy is failing us. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.